Zelensky's powerful message to Putin, Russia will fail when Ukraine is supported by the US. Welcome to Eagle News Channel. Throughout his speech on Wednesday night, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, was met with a barrage of passionate standing ovations from members of Congress from the United States, including Republicans and Democrats. It was a remarkable evening, the culmination of a remarkable day that took place at a pivotal juncture in the course of history. The entirety of the day was oriented toward three audiences, the people of the United States of America and its leaders, the people of Ukraine, and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Zelensky's message was heard clearly by all of them, from the moment he landed in the United States, wearing the olive green clothing that has become his trademark, to the warm welcome he received in the White House from Vice President Joe Biden, to the rapturous reception he received in the Congress, a place where very few foreign leaders have the honor of speaking to a joint meeting of the two chambers of Congress. The purpose of the visit was to persuade Americans to maintain their support for Ukraine, to demonstrate to Ukrainians that there is cause to maintain optimism and resiliency, and to demonstrate to Putin that Ukraine is not going to give up the fight. Even though the president of Ukraine is a very articulate speaker, the visuals spoke for themselves with a tremendous amount of impact. Biden's hand on Zelensky's shoulder. The kind manner in which so many members of Congress greeted him as he entered the chamber. Then there was the discussion over the words. Imagine that you are Putin, who only the day before went to see one of his very few supporters, the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, and then you watch as the politically divided United States comes together to embrace Zelensky. What would you think? Imagine Vladimir Putin listening to Vice President Joe Biden say, as he did in a press conference at the White House after speaking with President Zelensky for more than two hours, and it was very important for him and everyone else to see that President Zelensky and I are united, two countries together, to make sure he cannot succeed. It is essential for Putin to be aware that we are going to do all in our ability to ensure Zelensky's success. In the hope that the appearance would dissuade Vladimir Putin from continuing his war against Ukraine, President Trump granted the Ukrainian president the visit to the White House that he had requested many years ago. The visit would have to be postponed until a different president of the United States was in office, at which point it would be too late to stop Putin's attack. Zelensky made his historic trip at a crucial moment in what may come to be viewed by future generations as one of the defining conflicts of our time, the battle between democracy and autocracy, in which Ukraine is today the blazing, blood-soaked, shivering front line. Zelensky's trip took place at a crucial moment in what may come to be viewed as one of the defining conflicts of our time. He came to the United States to thank the people there. And he repeated himself numerous times. It is my sincere desire that these words of respect and gratitude find a home in the hearts of each and every American. But that was just the beginning of his message to the nation that had provided the weaponry that had made it possible for Ukraine to fight back against a far larger foe. Zelensky came to explain why this struggle is not simply Ukraine's fight on its own. Your money is not charity, he reassured a Congress that was ready to discuss adding billions more in military and economic support, a body that will soon have greater control over whether or not to be wary of democratic proposals. We approach it in the most responsible manner possible since it is an investment in the safety and democracy of the entire world. Zelensky had to convince Americans, both in Congress and at home, that Ukraine's war is a fight for the principles of the free world in order to sustain what has been a successful defense against Russia, despite the awful human suffering that has resulted as a direct result of the conflict. While Zelensky was pleading for continued and expanding support, he wouldn't be so brash or so frank as to put it exactly, but we ought to know the truth, he may be saying thank you, but it is the free world that should be thanking Ukraine. The people of Ukraine are currently engaged in a struggle for independence, democracy, and even the concept of national sovereignty itself. A triumph by Ukraine sends a message to dictators all across the world that the days of the past, when a powerful country could invade and swallow up its neighbors, are not going to return. If Ukraine were to lose, it would shake up the entire world. It is very evident that this is not only their battle. 
During a news conference held at the White House, Zelensky made the following statement, We genuinely fight for our common victory against this tyranny that is real life, and we will win. With his deep, gravelly voice, the President of Ukraine was attempting to persuade the people of the United States and their leaders to maintain their support for Ukraine. He referred to the fights that were fought in 1944 by American soldiers against Nazis. And he pointed out that Ukrainians will enjoy Christmas by candlelight, not because it's more romantic, but because Russian attacks have left a significant portion of the nation without power, heat, or running water. He stated that neither his family nor their friends were complainers, nor did they evaluate who had it worse. The only thing the Ukraine really wants is to obtain the backing it needs to carry on fighting until it finally prevails. To further illustrate his point, he stated that the Ukrainian soldiers who fought in the bloody struggle for Bakhmut had asked him to present the battle flag of Ukraine, which had been signed by the country's defenders, as a gift to the United States Congress. The house was filled with weeping and crying. 300 days had passed since the beginning of Russia's unjustified invasion when Zelensky finally arrived in Washington. It was his first trip overseas since the war broke out in February, and it came at a time when several factors could have conspired to counter what has been the remarkable and ferocious resistance by the people of Ukraine, along with the massive support from the United States of America and its NATO allies. Trying to use winter as a weapon, in the words of President Joe Biden, freezing people, starving people, the suffering of Ukrainian men, women, and children is worsening as winter approaches and Putin's forces use Iranian drones and other artillery to bombard crucial infrastructure, deliberately targeting civilian installations and leaving millions of Ukrainians in the cold and dark. This is trying to use winter as a weapon, and President Biden described it as freezing people, starving people. Putin is working toward destroying what has been an unbreakable desire to fight back. At the same time, the House of Representatives in the United States, which has consistently shown its backing for Vice President Joe Biden's push to support Ukraine, is set to change hands. Some Republicans, like as Kevin McCarthy, who is likely to become the next Speaker of the House, have voiced some reluctance to continue providing large-scale support for Kyiv. McCarthy has stated that he would not automatically accept the Biden administration's requests for greater assistance. And all of this is taking place at a time when it is widely assumed that Putin is plotting a fresh onslaught. It appears that Putin, who leads over a country that is significantly larger and more prosperous, still has faith that he can win. According to Zelensky's revelations, he presented Vice President Biden with an outline of a 10-point peace plan, but, Based on Putin's recent pronouncements, it appears that Russia is more prepared to continue fighting than to negotiate. It would appear that Putin is banking on the United States and NATO becoming weary and decreasing their level of assistance for Kyiv. Because of this, the speech that the leader of the Ukraine gave, which was reminiscent of Winston Churchill's address to Congress in December 1941, was likely the most important one he has delivered since the beginning of the conflict. Russia may emerge victorious in the end, and the world as we know it may not exist in its current form if the United States of America becomes weary of assisting Ukraine and gives credence to the hateful voices that criticize Zelensky. It would be a triumph for despotism, but it would be a devastating setback for democracy. If Zelensky was successful in communicating this during his historic visit, we can consider it a victory. Support the channel by like and share the video. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and the bell to receive the latest news. Thank you for watching.